Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way and today it's exciting. A bit early coming back to this episode, we've got a few days until the Plymouth game but it's because the kids are here so we need to check them out. I've just realised how terrible that sentence sounds, that context. Uh, oh, the youth intake. Youth intakes here, that's what I mean. Anyway, before we check the youth intake out, make sure you drop a like on today's video for me. Subscribe to the channel if new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. I think we'll jump straight into it. Let's have a not look at the team, look at the news items. Here we go. The youth intake is here. And I must say, it's looking pretty good. So again, it's been... So again, it's been sort of dished up between elite talents, top talents, and then players we can probably kind of forget about down here. But for the most part, this youth intake is really good. Three players here could be very useful. We'll start with the top. Uh, Kieran Freeman is available. Centre midfielder who has got, I don't know, some kind of standout attributes to an extent. We're looking at some decent first touch in composure and decision. So playmaker does seem fairly sensible to me tries long range passes as well i quite like that to be fair we could see him as like a deep line playmaker sitting in the more cdm spot potentially in the future at some point so kieran freeman could be the future could improve a lot four and a half stars of potential we'll see where that one goes scott edwards is a winger right this is going to be interesting because we don't play with wingers so he can play right midfielder but I think already we need to be making him a wing back. Already. I mean, what we're seeing right now, we're seeing quite a slow player, but does have really good work rates. The, the mentals are actually really good for a 16 year old professional personality, too. Good technique, first touch, crossing, dribbling is actually probably as good as, maybe not Bryce Hosanna, but definitely on the same level as Medford Smith. And Medford Smith gets plenty of assists and stuff. So. If we could work on the physicals, I'm seeing a good wing back here. And then of the elite talents, Paul Turner is the final one who is a, uh, well, I guess centre mid or a striker or attacking midfielder. 18 flair. That's quite nice to see. We could see him as a tricky attacking midfielder, decent vision and work rates. Passing a little bit low, but nine's not bad, actually, 15 years old. Again, the physicals may be a little bit poor determination is low and unambitious personality we need to fix that one but i could definitely see him becoming like the next brandon cover for example i don't really see him as a center mid i don't think he's quite physical enough for that center mid role but with 18 flair i think playing him a little further forward in a less physical role sort of in the hole i reckon he could be all right there you know Unfortunately, I don't think striker is really the option for him. Uh, he's not very good at finishing, but he could make a decent pressing forward potentially if his teamwork and work rate was improved a bit. I think attacking midfield is the best option for him. So three players there who could be very, very good. Of course, this is just the first indication of this. So we could see five-star potential as we did with a few players last season after they signed contracts. There's also a couple of four-star players as well. Let's have a quick look at the four-star potential players too, but we'll, we'll leave it there for this one. Uh, Ocean Barber is a Welsh winger, but also a striker. Again, well, I don't know. He's got some decent pace. His dribbling's good. Crossing, we're not too fussed about. I think he might actually be working out better as a striker than a winger. Finishing is low. That needs to improve, but he could be a deep liar. He could be all right. Ilan, is that how you say his name? Ilan Jeffries is a left winger. We've got quite a few wingers coming through. Uh, potentially in the future, we could be looking to change up to wingers. Or, of course, we could move him back to be a wing back, although crossing and dribbling would need to be improved massively for that to happen very good physically for his age he's got some solid mentals too and a really good personality technicals will develop as he gets older i think we could get this guy to be a decent left wing back so we could have two decent wing backs coming through here and then the final player we'll properly look at is uh reese ackerley who is a left back okay so again we could be thinking at left wing backs here but dribbling needs to massively improve unfortunately not the greatest of determination or personality 
but it's nothing we can't shoot her out of him. So we have some very good players, I must say. I'll get a quick screenshot of that for the Patreon, of course. So uh, if you guys want to claim one of these players, you can do so via the Patreon. Link to that in the description. But this has come early. Uh, usually it comes like in the last week of March, but it's come uh, a little bit earlier this time around. So we've got a few days before we take on Plymouth Argyle, who are 15th in League One right now. But with not that long left to go this season... I think we've all guaranteed ourselves a playoff place, but I'm starting to think that as MK Donda and Ipswich are matching our scores most weeks right, it's going to be tricky for us to get in the top two. So since you were last here for the draw to Rotherham and the loss to Ipswich, we have won four games in a row actually, which is pretty good going, uh, but only just in a few of these cases. The Wickham game, for example, uh, we had to score a penalty and a goal early on. After that, Wickham were pretty much in the ascendancy, very lucky not to lose that one. The game against Shrewsbury, again a game where we left it pretty late, not too late in this game against uh, Shrewsbury, but 1-0 Paul Mullen with the goal. But the next two games were very conclusive for us. A Paul Mullen brace and Rob Street's first goal for the club in a 3-0 win at home against Wigan and then we beat Forest Green 3-0 to Paul Mullen once again on the score sheet with a penalty and now you see Jim McBangle in there too. But although we keep winning, well, so do Ipswich and MK Dons for the most part. We have narrowed the gap down to eight points to Ipswich, but I feel like MK Dons have got a little further away. I can't quite remember. At least they've matched us to an extent, I would say. So uh, we are still five points behind MK Dons. Seven games to go this season. Anything can still happen. We could still drop further down the table. But I think, in fact, with results going our favour today, we could actually maybe secure playoffs. One thing I am very happy with, though, is Lincoln City. Just out of nowhere in the second half of this season, they have gone on like a winning run and they are looking absolutely superb and I'd love to see them sneak themselves into the playoffs. And I can already see it right now, a playoff final between us and Lincoln. I, I don't know what I'd want to do. Also, eight players are called up for international duty. Annoyingly, the only person in our first team is Chris Johns, which means we will miss him for a couple games unless oh, the game is for against Millwall, who obviously have a few international call-ups. So luckily for us, that might mean that Chris Johns isn't going to miss that game. Ah, but that now means we've got a big gap between, or not a big gap, just a week's gap between Plymouth. So it's Bristol Rovers today we'll take on. But it's also very good to see that we've got uh, five players in the Wales youth team right now, which... Um, I'm very happy about. So this is the team lining up for today's first fixture against Plymouth Argyle. Chris Johns in goal with a back line of Lennon, Oliver Street and Aaron Hayden. Medford Smith and of course uh, Finn Stevens in the wing back roles with Jim McBangled and James Jones just in front. Carney still playing well in the attacking midfield role on a 7.24 average rating in his last few games. The highest other than of course Harry Lennon who's always up there and Oliver Street, and actually quite a few players in the defence, so ignore I said that, to be fair. But just in front of him is 29 goals this season, Paul Mullen, and 15 goals this season, George Alexander. So, with kickoff upon us here today, plenty on offer still this season in terms of league positions. I mean, just one or two bad results for MK Dons could push us into those automatic promotion places, but... We have to be at our very best if we want to win these games. As we uh, kick off here right now, 25 minutes into this game, has been one shot and it's gone to us. So obviously nothing much coming of it. Finally, a highlight though, and it's coming towards Plymouth playing in their green kits right now as uh, Stockton gets it into Moncourt, out wide to Grant. And Grant now can put a ball into the middle. Can we stop it? We can't. Stockton, goal. Huh. <sighs> Not the greatest of starts to this game. I mean, I say start to the game. We are a third of the way through it, nearly half an hour into this game. I don't want to watch the replay again. I can't, I don't want to see them score more goals. So, um, yeah, not ideal. And it could get worse. Luckily, it doesn't. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. Lincoln City losing, by the way. Are they losing? They're dropping down the table. No, oh, they are losing 3 2. That's a high scoring first half. But they're losing 3 2 to Oxford right now. If we can't win today, I need Lincoln City to win. As a Lincoln fan, I want them to be in the playoffs. George Alexander, by the way, on the ball into Medford Smith. Can we grab ourselves an equaliser at the start of this second half? As I mean, that would have been a great goal for James Jones to score. And lucky for him, it's gone over the bar. But as the clock is ticking down in the second half, there's only been six shots in this game, three apiece. A really low shot game, this one, which is a bit unusual for us, I must say. As Mullen gets set through to the far post, can't really do much with it. 
gets it back into Stevens, into George Alexander, just too much on it for him, sadly, as Alexander into Medford Smith, into Jim McBangled, into Lennon, forced backwards, but we are recycling possession now, and James Jones, out of nowhere, scores an absolute screamer, helped in by the keeper quite a bit, Cooper palming that one into the back of the net, but we're getting ourselves back in this game, you love to see it, and this, I mean, the power on this from James Jones is superb. Not scoring many goals this season, but when he does, they're great. And so with 25 minutes or so to go in this game, let's bring Rob Street on as the uh, hidden secret weapon at the end. Medford Smith off for Harry Boys, and that might be the only changes that we make. We don't have a huge amount of quality on the bench, and I think maybe in the second half of the season, that's where we've been let down just a little bit. Oh, you hate to see it. Aaron Hayden putting that one over the bar. 20, 15 minutes or so to go. Actually, not even 20, 15 minutes to go. I'm going to shout attacking. Go on, shoot more, because we need to have a few more shots in this game. If we can just snatch a last-minute winner, that would be wonderful. If Lincoln City could do the same. 4-4 uh, four, four in their game against Oxford right now. Come on, Lincoln. Grab yourself another goal. They were... Oh, not going to win it, I don't think. We draw 1-1, Lincoln draw 4-4. I know it's not the Lincoln Loco, but I'm very excited because they played so, so well recently. And I've also, as a content creator, got one eye on the storyline. If Lincoln get into the playoffs and we have to play against them in the playoffs, storyline central. But we draw the game. But it's not all doom and gloom because according to the news articles, we secure a playoff spot at the minimum. So we are going to have the opportunity to play for promotion to the championship this season. Now, I'll be honest, I think promotion to League One came too early, but we've proved them wrong this season by doing so, so well. Promotion to the championship this season could be very much a season too early, and we'd struggle massively, but we said that about this season, and we haven't. So who knows? Sky's the limit. Anyway, obviously we were meant to play against uh, whatever they're called on Thursday or Wednesday, Millwall, but that's now been cancelled because of Millwall's international players. So we've got eight days off until a game against Bristol Rovers on the Monday. That must mean it's Easter Monday, I guess. Ah, so there's a few games taking place on the 29th of March. Do any of them affect us? Uh, I guess Ipswich Charlton could to an extent... But we're not really going to overtake Ipswich now. Charlton shouldn't catch up to us, so that's not too much of an issue. Crew playing Burton Albion, that's a big one for us. And of course, Lincoln City playing against Forest Green, that should be a win for them. Obviously, this will give us a game in hand on Crew and Charlton, but at this stage of the season, points on the board is so much more important than, uh, than games in hand. And Crew lose which is good for us. Uh, Charlton lose, but Ipswich wins. So, I mean, how are they not actually promoted yet? I guess if we don't win, they must get promoted. Lincoln City win, though, which is good for them. They stay three points clear of Derby County. You have to lose their game, hopefully. And now we're through to Easter Monday for our game against Bristol Rovers, plus all the league games going on for other teams as well. So, let's jump straight into it. Team stays the same. I have no reason to change it. It's the best team we probably have available to us right now. I'll be honest, George Alexander is pulling a few blanks in recent weeks, but I think that might be to do more with how the match engine has changed a little bit, potentially. Because he was scoring plenty of goals, the update came out, and it's, well, not quite the same since then. If that is the case, it would maybe be a nice challenge to actually go through and have to build a new tactic. Because this tactic's worked for us for three seasons, basically, without any changes to it. Anyway, 20 minutes into this one, um, nothing's really happening. Again, a pretty cagey game. Three shots to one shot. I mean, it's a few more shots on the half-hour mark of the previous game, but still... There's not a whole lot going on. I'm keeping one eye on the Lincoln City scores. They are 2-1 down. You hate to see it. Come on, Lincoln. Come on. We need you to start winning some games, please. But as halftime approaches, nothing is going on here at all. Thrash the arms. Far from police from what I've just seen. Of course, if Lincoln actually beat MK Dons, that helps us out quite a bit if we win this game to catch up with MK Dons. So I will keep tabs on that Lincoln game because that actually is quite useful for us, not just because I'm a Lincoln City fan. But... Bristol Rovers with a chance to come forwards. Good marking from our players there. Four to take the shot from distance. A nice save for Chris Johns, who's been and gone on international duty. Luckily, we're not missing him for this game. Lincoln still 2-1 down. Come on, you boys in red. I believe in you. I believe in you. Like, I believe in these boys in red. Although, maybe not quite right now. 20 minutes to go in this game. It's a very, very quiet one. Alexander off for Rob Street again. 
but will make him a target forward on attack, I reckon, actually. Bangled off for Louis Thompson, and we'll confirm those changes. 20 minutes to go. Come on, boys. Aaron Hayden injured. Not what we wanted to see. Kofi Barmer on you come then. Hopefully not too bad an injury for Aaron Hayden. He is going to be essential in the playoffs this season. Uh, should we have to go through the playoffs, of course. But I think it's likely we will do. Particularly if MK Dons beat Lincoln and we draw to Bristol Rovers. Don't lose. Oh. It's disallowed. We can't see the offside, but it, it was offside, apparently. Okay. Oh, that's a, a little save for us there, because that was a horrible defensive error for us. But defensively, playing very well. Good ratings all over the place. And if we can snatch a winner... Oh, Kofi Balmer, oh so close to scoring the winner in this game. There's 60 seconds left on the clock. Will anything come of it for us, though? As Mullen on the ball, coming forward down the wing. Can he get across in the middle? No, there's a foul. No card. But we've got one final set piece. A James Jones special into Louis Thompson. Brought down to Rob Street and someone's fouled someone there. Oh, well, that's a bit of an anticlimax, isn't it? Five seconds left on the clock. Nil-nil against Bristol Rovers. Two draws today. I'd argue we've been the better team in both games, but... It's the way things are going towards the end of this season. Like I say, it's very much Lincoln City from real life last season, but we are doing it in Football Manager right now with Wrexham. You hate to see it. Lincoln incidentally lost in the end as well, so they've got four games to basically win everything to try and get themselves in the playoffs. A rip switch still not properly promoted. We've got five games left. That is uh, 15 points available. Yeah, okay, technically, yes, they're not actually promoted yet. But if we slip, yeah, they're basically promoted, aren't they? Like, we're not catching them up. All they've got to do is get three points, and they're sorted. There's a chance, though, that we could overtake MK Dons. Six points behind them right now. It's a long way to go with five games. But next episode, we will be playing MK Dons. That could be pivotal this season. So join me tomorrow for what could be the final episode of this season, should we get promoted, or it could be the penultimate if we have to go via the playoffs. So thank you as much for watching today's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure to drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a lovely evening. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.